was going to start with Cornerstone, but we've got Cornerstone and then Great Union. <laughs> Good morning, church. Morning, morning. Welcome to Shore Community Church. If it's your first time here, a big warm welcome. If it's your 50,000th time here, a big warm welcome. Great to see so many people here. Hello to everyone online. We're going to start our worship service shortly. Is everyone hot enough? Woohoo! It's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> We've got the windows open there, so hopefully it should be a bit of a breeze through. Okay, so we're going to worship the Lord this morning. So if you're able to, you can join me, stand and worship the Lord. Oh, sorry, Paul. It's good to see you. We've got Paul here. Good to see Paul, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's great to see him. Okay, so we're going to worship the Lord. So again, let me just encourage you just to lift up our very beings to the Lord this morning. You know, let's just focus on him. We're going to worship him. We're going to get into his presence. We're just going to sing these words, not just words, but words of love, words of worship, words of praise to our King and our Lord. So if you join me, church, and let's just focus on this. Lord, 
church every single voice now Christ alone Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong and he saves love through the storm he is Lord Lord of all Christ alone Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong, in the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord. Which we can build on, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to you, Lord. Well, good morning, everybody. You're really welcome. It's great to be with you to, this morning and to, uh, to worship and to proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Do you know, uh, a man who I don't often quote once said, there are decades where nothing happens and there are weeks when decades happen. <laughs> and I have to say that this week feels like one of them. But reflecting and praying on on events of last week, this morning, I really felt the words of an old hymn come to mind. This will show you just how old I am. And those words go like this. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure as the billows roll. Gosh, it's great that everyone still knows it. Right, are you ready, guys? (laughs) And whatever we see on our television screens, the Lord is in control. And we can rest and trust in that. Now I have some notices for you. Um, We have a youth leaders barbecue starting tonight. Not just for the amazing youth leaders of our church, um, but uh, for anybody in our town who is is involved in leading uh, youth in our our town. I'm told it starts at 5.30 and that... um, you know, and it's, and it's here at church, I believe. So if you're involved in youth, do come along. Um, if you're like me, probably don't. <laughs> um, Pirate Island Holiday Club, as they say, bookings are now available to start on church suites. So please, um, if you're thinking of enrolling for that event or you know um, children who are, then please get in early. Um, 
what we can all do to help is they are after some craft ingredients, and this sounds like a, a Blue Peter appeal. Uh, please could you provide kitchen rolls, egg boxes, and all those sort of things that you might make, um, I guess, structures out of, and uh, leave them somewhere safe and um, it, somewhere in the foyer area. I'm sure Carla can help make sure that they don't become a mountain of stuff. There's a music practice here every fortnight. Uh, the next one is this coming Wednesday. Uh, it says, come along whatever your musical experience. Now, I guess there's a, a level where that might be difficult, so I, I won't put my, <laughs> my services forward. But uh, if you do have a heart for worship and music, whatever your musical capabilities, come along and be part of that. Uh, June is National Month of Prayer for Toddler Groups. And what better way to express our love and appreciation for the work that's done for the toddlers who come to this church than to help raise the money for this wonderful side garden that we're, we're wanting to raise money to make in a safe and secure um, uh, place for toddlers. So um, watch out for appeals for that. And if you'd like to help or contribute towards that, let me know. Um, Jamie is on holiday, uh, you may have noticed, but uh, we've been very ably led and people have preached um, magnificently uh, in his absence, but he's, he's away and coming back on the 3rd of July. Now, just before we do the collection, the offering, um, I have a very special announcement. I'm, little birdies told me that um, somebody has a birthday today. I believe that is Julie Passmore. I'm reliably informed by her husband that she is 28 years old today <laughs> and 360 months. <laughs> so I won't sing happy birthday or else the meeting will probably come to um, an early close. But, um, but um, happy birthday, Julie. Right, can we have some volunteers to take the offering up? Thank you very much. Amanda. Okay, church, we're going to continue. Okay, church, we're just going to continue whilst the basket's going around. We'll do one more song and then the kids are going to be going out to their groups. So again, if you are able to, stand with me. We're going to be singing about how God created everything. The air in our lungs, everything is created by him. You know, we owe everything to him. He is good. He is loving. He is merciful. He is so great. How great is our God, and how great is He who created all things. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Sing that again. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, beautiful church, it's your breath.
blessing upon them. We pray a blessing upon the workers. Lord, speak into the lives of these children. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you just speak through the workers in this place, Lord. Just give them the skills. Just be upon them. Bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. just through the songs and just um, I just really sense God talking about restoration and that you know the words in this song it's talking about you know we are going to pour out our praise through you know these bones will sing out and it can be like situations feel like they're dead they're dry bones there's nothing there we're broken um, I don't know about anyone here, but I've got so many songs in me of God as the restorer, as the restorer of my life, of my trust, of my faith, of situations, you know, and this morning I just, I guess I'm just saying trust in God as the restorer and sing praises, remember the times he's restored you and restored your situations. And as we sing, just praise him for being that, being that restorer of our souls.
mountains move We come with expectation Waiting here for you Waiting here for you You're the Lord of all creation Still you know my heart The author of salvation You've loved us from the start Waiting here for you With our hands Lifted high In praise And it's you We adore
Just let the Lord minister to you. I'm just standing here in his presence. Spirit of the living God, we open up our hearts, our minds. We receive what it is that you want us to hear from you today. You minister to us as you always do, but we are here for you, Lord. And church, if there's anything on your mind, any prayers, lift them up. I just want to thank you for your, your love, your forgiveness, Lord. All the faults that we have, the flaws that we have, Lord, the sins are forgiven, they're washed away by your blood, Lord. Oh, Lord, no one else can do that. Nothing else can do that, Lord. Only made possible through your sacrifice, Lord. So thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you, God, for your love and for your freedom, Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is There is freedom The Spirit of the Lord is There is freedom Lift your eyes to heaven Freedom reigns in this 
this place the showers of mercy and grace falling on every face there's freedom there's freedom reigns freedom reigns there's freedom reigns in this place showers of mercy and grace falling on every face there's freedom if you're tired and thirsty if you're tired and thirsty there is freedom there is freedom if you're tired and thirsty if you're tired and thirsty Voices, freedom reigns in this place. Cause freedom reigns in this place. Showers of mercy and grace falling on every face. There is freedom. Jesus reigns. My Jesus reigns in this place. Showers of mercy and grace falling on every face. There is freedom. There is freedom. We thank you, Lord, for the freedom. We thank you, Lord, for the grace. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. King Jesus, yours is the name above all names. Jesus, there's no other name. There's power in the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. 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 Blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 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 For He is our.
and we can look to you, we can rest in you, Lord, we don't need to be anxious, Lord, we know that you are there, Lord, we know that you are in control, and you will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, giving us the peace which surpasses all understanding, Lord, you reign in all the earth, for every situation, nothing is too big for you, Lord. We cast it onto you, Lord. We lift it up to you, Lord. We put it in your hands, Lord. And we thank you, God, because you have it. Lord, we thank you, God, that we can just spend time in your presence today and worship and praise you, Lord. And we thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. One, two. We, there we are. Good morning. It's good to see you all. Good to see you online. I hope I remember to talk to you. And thank you, band. Thank you for sound desk. Thank you for projectors. Thank you for people who said welcome, which was me. Uh, and it's good to see you. And um, I'm afraid we've been talking about the Lord in charge of the universe which is wonderful, the Lord is overall. Well, I'm going to bring us right down to earth with something very practical this morning that applies to all of us and applies to me. Now, we're going to start off with a picture of my bean plant. Now, I like growing, I like gardening. I grew this bean from seed and I've put, had it in a pot and then I've had it also in the garden and I protected it. You can see it's got round it some white bits, and they are eggshells. And then there's a moat, and then there's coffee grounds from the cafe. And this is to protect it. And um, I examine them every day. I go out in the morning, that's the first thing I go and do, shows you how devoted I am to my garden. And I want to see, uh, is it growing well? And I want to see if its defences are working. Because I've got an enemy in the garden. What is it? Slugs and snails, yes. And actually, I went out this morning and it's not looking like that anymore. Half of it's been eaten. And I'm going out at night now to check on it. So anyway, yeah. And I have to check that it's got enough water. And I have to check that it's, it's got flowers, hasn't it? This one has it, but by the, when I took the photo, it hadn't got flowers, but it's got flowers now, so there should be beans. And by the way, I need to say thank you to Jamie, because he did this for me, and I did it about two weeks ago. So, you know, as you think over a word, you might sort of, you know, change it a bit, so you might find it's changed a bit. Now, Jamie asked me if I would have a word to give, and I thought, oh, yeah, maybe. And then as I prayed, I had two words. And I didn't quite see how they would link up, but now I do what I did then. And it's, as I examine my plants, I need to examine myself. So here we are, the practical things of walking with the Lord. And that one of the, um, the verses that came to me is from 2 Corinthians 13, 5. And it says... Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you realize that Christ Jesus is in you, unless, of course, you fail the test? Now, I like reading today's message. It's not a translation, but it really puts it in English that, you know, we can understand a bit more. And this is really, really good. And it says, test yourselves to make sure that you are solid in the faith. Don't drift along, taking everything for granted. Give yourselves regular checkups. You need first-hand evidence, not hearsay, may he say, that Jesus Christ is in you. Check up. I'm going to talk about checkups this morning. And um, a checkup, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is a thorough examination 
especially a medical one or a dental one, to detect problems. Who's had a checkup this week? Anybody? Oh, you're all healthy. Oh, yes, Richard has, thank you, yes, yes. I, I did too, that's why I've got all this on my face. Um, I had to have a checkup and had to have um, skin treatment. So, the other passage that Paul wrote is to the church in Colossae. So, we're going to look at a map. And you can see this is where Paul was actually um, sending the letter to. And that is Asia, that's Asia Minor, it's Turkey. And Paul was in prison. He was there and um, he heard something that was going on in the church in Colossae. Now, this was written about 60 AD. So Jesus had risen and died and gone to heaven about 27 years before that. And Paul wrote them this letter, and he'd never met them, these people in Colossae. But it was through him that the whole province became, Christ well, heard about the message of Jesus. And... Paul lived in Ephesus for three years. And then he, he taught people and then they became Christians and then they, they went on and they went out and started churches. And one of these guys that started a church was called Epaphras. And Epaphras went to Colossae, told them about the gospel, told them about Jesus, and they became Christians. And there was a group of Christians. Now, don't think of it as being a church with a building. It was just a little group that met in a church, in a house. And they were the church. And most of them were Gentiles. That means that they hadn't been brought up to know the one and only true God. They didn't know the whole background of salvation. They didn't have the Old Testament. So these people really, really needed to be taught. And the problem was that some false teaching had come into the church called Gnosticism. And this, this teaching under, under, underlined or underrated the fact that Jesus was supreme. It, it underlined that Jesus was the only answer. And Epaphras was so worried about this teaching that he went to Paul in Rome. Imagine how he had to get there by land, then by sea, he went to find Paul in Rome and tell him, what, what shall I do? What shall I teach these Christians, these new Christians, where they, they're, they're saying that Jesus isn't enough? And Paul wrote this wonderful letter to them. And it's really a letter that's worth reading. And he, said, he sent it back with two people called Titicus and Onesimus. And, they, and then when they got it, they would read it, they would read it, they would read it, they would copy it, because in those days, they didn't have the New Testament. It wasn't written. The first um, book of the Bible, that was, uh, of the New Testament that was written was Mark, and it wasn't written till 10 years after this. So this is the only thing that they had, and the rest of it was teaching by hearsay. So they had to share it, and they did, and I'm sure they wrote it down as best as they could. So let's have a look at what he wrote. Now, I was amazed... I've been thinking about these verses for about two or three weeks before the coronation. And do you recognize the reading? It was what um, Rishi Sunak read. And I don't know about you, I was a bit surprised <laughs> that he read it, you know. And then I thought, well, Lord, you can speak to him through this because he must have practiced it. And um, towards the end, it talks about having redemption through his blood and, and all this, the wonderful salvation of Jesus. So this is it. So I thought, being a teacher, let's all read it together. So we're going to read it together. Now, I don't want anybody racing ahead like they do in school. So we'll, we'll have a go, and then it might help us to, um, you know, appreciate it a bit more. Okay, so we'll start. And it might be a bit different. I hope it's not, but... We'll see. So it's this. Ready? For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, 
and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. What a reading and what a prayer. You know, sometimes I pray, Lord, bless so-and-so. Paul didn't. That's what he wrote. And if you want to have a good, you want to really pray for people, pray the prayers of Paul. He really, really did know how to pray. So, let's see how we can, I can apply this to um, what, what um, the Lord has given me. But the first thing you have to do is to make sure that you know Jesus. And maybe you've been coming into church for a while and you've been drifting along and you think it's okay, but do you know Jesus? Do you know him? Do you know him as Lord and Savior? And if you don't, think about it. You, because really that's the most important thing in life, coming to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And if you haven't and you want to talk to someone afterwards, come to the front and we'll help you find the Lord. Now, the first thing that we have to do is to be filled with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. Yes, it is slightly different. Now, what does the word filled mean? Now, filled means complete or controlled by. So God wants us to be complete, and he wants us to be controlled by the Spirit. Now, complete, and there's a picture of a ship coming up, and I deliberately chose one that had these um, uh, rudders. That's, the, that's what I wanted. And this is one of the um, Roman ships that they would have had in those days for carrying cargo. And the word filled means complete in the fact that the ship is fully laden and ready to sail. And that's what God wants us to be, fully laden and ready to sail into, into life and to have all his power in our lives. And um, it also means complete in, in, a, in a sense. It means the fact that, um, how can I put it? Um, not only is the ship got everything that it needs, but when it's filled as well, you can be filled with anger, and you, but you can be filled with the Spirit. And that's what God wants us to be complete. He wants us to be filled, and he wants us to know all that he can give us because there's so much that he has to give us. So when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we're controlled by him. And all of us who've known Jesus as Savior, we've got the Holy Spirit in our lives, and he's the one that will control and, and lead us. And I wanted the rudders on the ship to show you that we need rudders in our lives. We need Jesus. He's the, he's the rudder of our life. And if we don't have rudders, we're going to drift along and just go anywhere. And that's so important that we know Jesus in our lives. Now, the next one is spiritual wisdom. Now, in the Bible, there's two words in Greek, because the Bible is written in Greek, the New Testament. And the first one is Sophia, and that's the name, isn't it, we, we use. So, um, we had a Sophia that worked here with us. And it, it means knowledge of the first precepts. Now, what does that mean in plain language? It means knowledge of the basics of Christianity, knowing the basics. And then the other word is sunesis, which means how to put those, that knowledge into practice. So you can see what it means, that we have to know the basis of Christianity, and then we have to know how to put it into practice. And how do we know the basics of Christianity? This. Do you read it every day? I'm not asking you, but I'm asking you. Yeah. Do you study it? This is God's word. This, is, this will tell us how to live. And it's so important. And if you don't read it every day, there are notes you can get. There are Bible um, notes online. Just be careful which ones you find. But there, you can go to the shop in town. I went there the other day. And by the way, I don't have a shares in this shop. But I went to the Bible shop. And I looked at all the amazing Bible study notes you can get. Amazing. And all the books you can get on certain books of the Bible. And Richard, there's a second-hand shelves of books, which is brilliant. Why are you shaking your head, Julia? 
Juliet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, really, it's knowing the Bible and, and reading it and putting it into practice. Now, there is the general will of God, and it's all in here. But the specific will of God, sometimes you need to find out where God wants you to go, find out where God wants you to live, where God wants you to work. These things he can show us, but they all have to fit in with God's word. You can't do something that's against God's word. So God has given us this. This is our guide. And it's worth reading. There's all different translations. I think there's about 200 translations in English. And the people that I worked amongst didn't even have one. But, you know, that's, that's so important that we read this word. Now, the other word is live a life worthy of the Lord. Thank you. Live a life worthy of the Lord. Now, in other words, don't let the side down. Don't let him down. Live a life worthy of him. And um, some of the verses, I've got some of the verses all about walking. And what I'm trying to do is share with you some of the things I've learnt through studying this passage in the Bible. And there's loads and loads of verses on walking with God. But I've just got five. And the first, first one is walking in love. And the message says... Keep company with him and learn to love. As you keep, you know, there's some people that you can't love, aren't there? There's some situations where you, you're just overwhelmed. But as you keep company with Jesus, he will help us to love. Another one is walk in peace. And that's from Colossians 3.13. And that means walking in peace with other people. And that means forgiving, forgiving, and being forgiven. And the, today's message says, forgive quickly and completely. I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't forgive quickly. And I don't forgive completely. And that's what I've got to do in order to walk with Jesus. And then another one is walk in purity from 1 Thessalonians 4.3. And walking in purity means being careful in what I do what I read, what I watch. You know, sometimes, I don't know about you, but when I go home and I'm tired, I just sit down and put the television on. And then sometimes you think, ooh. And I know that we were talking about this with someone in the cafe the other day. You suddenly put it on and you think, I shouldn't be watching this. It's not for me. And there are things that we can't watch, that I can't watch. I shouldn't watch. Unless the Lord says, watch it so that you can talk about it and, you know, follow it up. But that, that's the thing. And, you know, Ali, Alistair last week, what did he talk about? The tongue. And I don't know, I've been challenged this week by that. The tongue. Being careful in, in what I say and what I do. And then walk by faith. I don't know. A lot of us are going through really difficult times. We don't understand why these things have happened. We've been walking with Jesus. We've been doing his will. And then, then we're not getting our prayers answered as we want. We're finding it difficult. Well, we have to walk by faith. That's the way. We don't see where he's leading us, but we have to walk by faith. And then this one challenged me this week. Walk in honesty. You know, being absolute honest in everything. You know, sometimes I've said things and I think, ah, that wasn't exactly honest. And I have to put it right. There's so many little things, being honest in, well, with our money, with our, anything that we're doing, but being honest, walking in honesty. And I can only live a life that's worthy of him by walking with him. And there's a, every day, every afternoon, I see a man and his teenage son and the dog going for a walk. And they're chatting away. They chat there and they chat back. 
And, and they, they do it every day. And I just thought, that man knows his son. And that son knows his dad. And that's really what it is, is walking with Jesus. How do we walk with him? Talk with him, sing to him, proclaim his freedom, and read this. That's how it can be. Now, the next one is please him in every way. Now, we can't own our salvation, but we can please the Lord by trying to walk his way. We're all going to fail. We're all not going to do it as we should, but we can please him by trying to walk his way. And it's how I respond to life and its problems. I'm not perfect, none of us are, but we're trying. And the, 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 today's message says, and listen to this, it says, live for the master, making him proud of you as you work in his orchard. Make him proud of you. I don't know about you, but when you're children, you work hard, don't you, to please your teacher, to please your, your mum or your dad. And you work hard so that you can please him. And that's what God wants us to do for him, to please him. And then the last one is, well, next to last, is bearing fruit in every way. Now, this was a challenge to me. We've all got work to do. We've all got work that we can do for him, work, doing good works. But it challenged me about the fruit, the word fruit. And um, it made me think of the fruit of the Spirit. Now, when you're, we're children, we quite often, what we did in church here, learn the, 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 the whole li list of the fruit of the Spirit. I never did when I was a child. And um, I wonder if you can say it with me. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I had to learn it so that I knew to say it to you today. Um, but the, this is the fruit of the Spirit, and I've been thinking, I might be wrong, but I've been thinking, now, so often I pray for people, Lord, give them your peace. But if, I'm a, if that person is a Christian, haven't they got the peace in them already? Do you see what I mean? And, you know, I, I pray for somebody to have love or patience, but haven't they got it in them already? So how do I pray? How do I pray about this? And I, I think that when I pray for somebody to have peace, I say, Lord, they've got your peace in them. Help them to work this through and to trust you, and your peace will come out. Lord, I need patience. Patience is there, Lord. It's the fruit of the Spirit. I'm going to draw from you your patience today. And um, this week, um, I, I read um, uh, on, on the phone, um, Lecto Divina, and it was talk, it's talking all about um, Pete Gregg, he's doing a, um, a pilgrimage. Does anybody else read this on, on uh, Yeah, yeah. And it's been f great fun, is not it, following him. And I've even got the map out and found all these, these places in Scotland where he's walking. He's walking from one side of Scotland to the other, following the footsteps of the Celtic Christians. One of them was called Aidan. So he's going from Iona, if you've heard of Iona, and he's walking all the way over to Lindisfarne. And he quoted Thomas a Kempis. And he said that when, when I am um, having problems with somebody, I have to think kindly about them. So I thought, yeah, I had this problem this week. I will think kindly because that's, that's the fruit of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness. But then he added, not only to think kindly, but to think highly of them. Ooh. <laughs> and I thought, oh, Lord, you know that person, you know what that person's like and unreliable and blah, 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 blah. And I thought, no. I'm going to think highly that that person is better than me, which is quite a thing to say. And do you know what? It changed everything. To think kindly and highly of people. That is really something. And then the last one is to grow in the knowledge of God. We've been singing about this this morning. And... Um, 
again, looking at the Celtic, what we've been um, following, he, um, Pete Gregg um, takes their prayers and he says, High King of Heaven. And you, you know this song, it, it comes, you know, um, what is it about? Give me your vision. Yeah, you are my vision, that's right. You are my vision. High King of Heaven. And it really, I don't know, it just struck me afresh about God being the High King of Heaven. And not only that, but he's the King of Kings. Do you remember that chorister that came and stood in front of the king when he was waiting to be crowned? And he said, Your Majesty, in the name of the children of God, we welcome you in the name of the King of Kings. I don't know about you, I was very surprised to see this little boy standing there in front of the king. But he was saying, King of Kings. And my Jesus is, is the King of Kings. My Jesus is, is the High King of Heaven. And I asked myself, do I know him? Do I know him? Do I see him like that? And it really, really touched me. And I began to think, well, God is omniscient. Long words now. That means he knows everything. God is omnipotent. That means he's all powerful. God is omnipresent. That means he's everywhere. And then God is omnibenevolent. He's all love. Do I know him? I want to know him. I want to know him better. But do I know him? But I need to grow in the knowledge of God. So, now, what's the next on the line? Ah, and if we do this, we'll be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. Now, we're talking about checkups. Um, we all have checkups, and do you know, when you get older, you seem to have more than ever. <laughs> you know, I, I'm keeping the NHS very busy these days, um, but we, we all need them. And um, of course, a car has to have a checkup, doesn't it? MOT. And I don't know about you, but my car, well, it's not that new, but you, you go and you approach the garage with trepidation. And you're wondering if they're going to phone you and say, oh, you've got to have this fixed. And about, not last MOT, but the MOT before, I had a problem because I had a red light on the dashboard. Now, I'd seen this light, and I thought, well, was it there before? I can't remember. I think it might have been. Oh, I'm not going to bother about it. Well, I regretted not bothering about it because it cost me £200 to get it sorted. And... I think another car I had, it failed its MOT because it had a, a slight hole in the exhaust. And um, I wasn't aware of that. And what I'm getting at is that I was aware of the red light, but I didn't do anything about it. But I was not aware of the exhaust, but then I was told. And this is what happens when we do a spiritual checkup. We might be aware of something, we're just saying, oh, I'll just leave it for a moment, I'll just drift along. It doesn't matter. Or we might not even be aware of it and God might speak to, to, to us. So that's really what I'm here to say this morning. So let's have a look at what a spiritual checkup is. We'll, we'll, keep, we'll come back to that bit in a minute. Yeah. Is that it? One more. Check up, that's right, thank you. Am I? There we are. So let's have a look and you just ask yourself, are you going to have a red light that you ignore or maybe that God's spoken to you like he spoke to me this week? Am I filled with the knowledge of his will? Am I living a life worthy of him? Am I pleasing him in every way? Am I bearing fruit in every good work? And am I growing in the knowledge of God? That's a huge amount of things. But that's really, in our walk with God, that's what we need to know. But this isn't to condemn us, because I don't know about you, but I've failed my MOT <laughs> in, in quite a few of those. 
But it's okay, I've failed, but then I can put it right. And that's what happens, isn't it? When, when you, you failed your MOT, the car fails its MOT, they put it right for you so that it will pass again. And if, if you're um, not well, and you know, you've had an, a checkup, and your eyes aren't as they should be, or your stomach isn't as it should be, or your blood's not as it should be, what do you do? You change, you take the medication. You change the way you eat, diet, yes. I've been diagnosed as pre-diabetic, so a lot of sugar has now gone out of my diet. And we take the medication. And that's what we do to get, to get right. And so Paul says, I'm not saying that I have seen, I have this all together, that I have it made, but I'm on my way. None of us have got it made. We're on our way. And we have to keep our eyes on the goal. And that goal is Jesus. And keep your eyes on that goal and everything God has for us. So let's keep our eye on the goal. And if we do, and then we can go back to those verses that we had before, that we will have endurance, and he will give us endurance. He will help us. He will have us give us patience as we do it. He will give us joy, and he will give us a thankful heart. So that's really what I want to share with you, and I pray that it will be a blessing. And I'm going to pray now, and we'll ask the band to come up and just lead us again. Lord, we thank you that when you called us to be your children, you didn't call us to be alone and to work out our salvation. What you did, Lord, is that you gave us all the equipment that we need. And we thank you. We've been singing to you, Holy Spirit, today. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're in each one of us that know you. And thank you, Lord, we do want to do this. We do want to bear fruit. We do want to please you. We do want to walk with you. And we do want, Lord, to be those that really grow in our knowledge of you. And thank you, Lord, that really, we're, that your word says that we're changed from glory to glory and you're changing us day by day. Change me, Lord. Change me so that I can follow you as I should. Change me in my relationships with other people. Change me in my daily living and help me to keep a check up on my life. I pray in your name. Amen. Thanks, Joe. That was, that was really, really very, very good, that. Essential, but of um, with practical guidance, but essential at the same time. Walking with our Lord. We're going to continue our worship now, church. So if you are able to, again, do please stand with me. But you remain seated if you'd like to. That's absolutely fine. We're going to sing praises again to our Lord and our Saviour, King Jesus, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, our Saviour, our Redeemer. my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my saviour on that cursed tree body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore, for endless days. We will sing Your praise, O oh Lord, O oh Lord our 
river at break of dawn the son of heaven rose again oh trample death where is your sting the angels roar for Christ the King for Christ the King oh praise the privilege, Lord, to be in your presence, to stand here and worship you, Lord, and my brothers and sisters, Lord, to be empowered by your spirit. Thank you, God, for all that you are and all that you're doing in us and through us, Lord, all that you've done previously in our lives, all that you're doing right now, Lord, and thank you, God, in advance for everything that you are doing, Lord. I pray, Lord, that your will be done. You put all your plans into place, Lord. And enable us just to keep our eyes on you, Lord, at all times. Spending time with you. Lord, you never turn your back on us. You never walk away from us. We can put our gaze on other areas, Lord, but it's you who are always there. So I thank you, God, for being with us in every situation, Lord, right this now, this time right now, and for the future, and for this going week ahead, and months, and years ahead, Lord, for eternity. Lord, I pray that you put your plans into place. I pray, Lord, that you bless us as we go about our week now, Lord, and I thank you, God, for the way that you're going to be using us. And lift up this time of worship, and this just lift up all these prayers to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
church. It's been great to spend time with you. Have a great week. We've got teas and coffees outside. We have also time now of prayer at the front. If you'd like to pray for someone or have a particular issue you'd like to be a prayer over, do come and join us. Just leaves me to say, have a wonderful week. Take care, and we'll see you next week. God bless.